All right. So why can't we share him is not within the Guardians of Gaia or the THC uh, series, universe thing, whatever. But it is heavily inspired by um, the repetition of the idea in my head of Natalie and Haley and Morgan's relationship. But instead, I grounded it within reality it was kind of in network with this idea that I wanted to write some stories about New Jersey, some stories about real life, some more just fiction, romance books, but horror, paranormal type stuff like that. Um, and this is definitely a horror book. It may not seem like it. It definitely doesn't seem like it because it's not like gory horror. It's like the most horrific things you'd ever you allow your best friend to move in with you you know your best friend and your boyfriend do not get along that's terrible your, your best friend fucks your boyfriend after not getting along with him after deciding that she does I don't like your boyfriend I don't think you should be with him I don't think he's right for you I'm gonna fuck him real quick and <laughs> And, you know, all the things I was saying before, you should still believe, but I'm going to fuck up again real quick. And now I think that maybe I was a little hasty in my decision, and maybe it's not that bad being here, and I kind of like the dynamic of what's going on with me and your man. And maybe you're tripping because this dick is really good, and if you're not satisfied with the dick, I don't know what's up with you. <laughs> That's why I can't we share him in a, in a nutshell. Um, peel back the layers a little bit more. So you have Rochelle, who is living with a man who is heavily abusing her. Um, basically attempting, uh, I wouldn't say a sex slave, but whatever you consider a playboy bunny woman that you keep around uh, be pretty and nice and have sex with your friends. Uh, that's what Rochelle was, and she got tired of it. And the same thing with her and Maya having her spit sessions. You got Rochelle. I don't mention this in the book at all, but every fucking girl does this shit. And, uh, they have, they, they, you see Maya attempt it on the balcony, but Rochelle kind of draws back because... She's just engaged in sexual intercourse with her man. <laughs> she liked it. So, um, yeah, I collect myself for my giggling from this book. Cause it's really kind of a silly book, honestly. But Rochelle's coming from that lifestyle. You have her and Maya to going back and forth. So while Rochelle is like talking about real issues that she's going through, you have Maya complaining about Edward and all this other stuff. So Rochelle walks into the situation not liking Edward because she's likening what she's like her real trauma and her real issues, what she's going through to him doing the same shit to Maya. There's none of that shit going on. And he's a really hardworking guy who's trying, who's super ambitious. And it's just the more, it says you have some people that, the more you're around them, the more driven you become. You become the five people that you're most like. So that's kind of what I think Monica is her name. I think I'm saying Monica. Oh, yeah. um, Monica, I think, is her name, actually. Mo. I don't know. I think it was Mo and Ro when I was like writing the book. Mo and Ro. So it's Monica and Rochelle, I believe. So Monica has this guy. She's trying to have a nice Christian conservative life with him. And he's more than likely cheating on her, honestly. But she's withholding the pussy. So in comes a girl who's just been fucking random guys without any say-so or anything like that. And then she meets, she basically meets the guy that all the dudes that have been begging her while she's been in drug-induced comas, sexually abusing and essentially raping her, pretend to be. And, you know, the fuck, they're going to tuck you in the bed and make you some cookies and tea. 
yeah, you might throw some ass for that, you know, yeah, you might, you might let him clap from the back for that, honestly, you might, if you don't, you don't, but Rochelle does, because you didn't have to drug her, you didn't have to rape her, you didn't have to beat her, you didn't have to force her into anything, and I think it's like the reality that sometimes what is going on is that the woman who is in a real abusive fucking situation is talking to the girl who is in a great fucking situation. I'm not saying that I've ever been the fucking either or. I've been in both. I've been, honestly, I've been the abuser and I've been a pretty good guy at times. It really depends what age I was at and what the fuck was on my mind at that time, what the fuck I was going through. Um, but... You have Edward, who's a good fucking dude, you know, doing the right fucking thing, and he's waiting and waiting to get some pussy. He's got a chick live with him, fucking sleeping with him, brushing up against his dick and shit while he's sleeping. He got his boss. That's what the fuck. He's probably fucking his boss, honestly. He says, I'm not having sex with her, but it's like, eh, eh. The bitch tried to marry you. <laughs> you know, she tried to marry you, like, if a woman tries to marry you, either you, you slid her some dick before you and Monica got serious, or you guys were on some shit before you and Monica got serious. I guess that kind of, like, contradicts a lot of the things I said in the older woman. I would say, at the end of the day, if you got the choice between the hotter, younger chick and the older woman right there in front of you, you probably choose the hotter, younger chick. But when the hotter, younger chick is withholding the pussy and the older chick is legs wide open ready to fucking give you the world uh, hard decision to make <sighs> Edward tries to stay faithful he tries to do the right thing with Monica but before her, Rochelle moves in him and her are arguing they're fucking fighting they're just doing the regular old bullshit fucking and fighting routine something else. they're all fucking they're just fighting they're just fighting and fucking control and it's Monica trying to control him and him fucking resisting and fighting. It's because essentially he's in a better situation than Monica is. And Monica really represents... I just talked to a woman like this the other day. I don't want to use her name, but it represents a woman like this. that You want a great man. You don't want to reward him for being a great man. You want a man to marry you. You don't want to be sexually appealing to that man or have sex with him. And it's like men and women don't value the same things. Women think men give a shit if you have, they don't give a shit if you have money or not. You know, they give a shit about how you treat us. You give a shit about what you're like as a person and uh, those kind of things and those kind of factors into existence. Uh, women don't care. You can, you can, and this is story is perfect. You can be in complete direct opposition to her friend. She will choose both. She will find a way to talk to the friend in a way that will never offend the man and be as honest with the friend as possible without ruining her relationship. She will find a way to do both. Um, men do not, men will fuck your wife, they will fuck your daughter, they will fuck your mom. If a dude doesn't like you, he will let you know that he does not like you. He will find a way to get under your skin and fuck with you or fuck your life up or some type of way. Um, you see both sides of that in this story, but with women, it's so surreptitious, it's so sudden. The scorn, the wrath, the violence. <laughs> that as Rochelle thinks that, the possibility of sharing this man, the title of the book, Why Can't We Share Him? The Rochelle thinks that the possibility of like sharing this man with her conservative friend who's withholding sex from him, purposely withholding sex from him, she thinks this is going to be a situation in which it's okay. I'll have sex with him and you two play house. But I'm fucking and I'm cooking for him and I'm cleaning. <laughs> like, I'm his woman, but I'll let you say that you're his woman is essentially what Rochelle proposes to Monica. She's like, bitch, I'm doing this for you. <laughs> and 
bitch, you should thank me for fucking your bed. No, that's, Monica was not a fucking about to, Monica was not about to take that shit at all. <laughs> you cooking for my man. You fucking my man. Because it's like, in the book, you kind of got to piece the shit together at a certain point. If you read it the first time, you won't. You probably won't catch your problem. Girl, I fucking had it. You got to read it, like, second or third time to really catch the shit. That, like, she legit plot this shit. Like, she's like, why don't you just go out and have fun, and I'll stay here with Edward. No, what the fuck? She just got... She damn near fucking, like, Rochelle, like... <laughs> Never play a woman for a fool, my nigga. Never play a woman for a fool, bro. Never do it. Because they're gonna do some shit like this. For real. And they do some shit like this. Where Rochelle fucks the dude. Gets in trouble for fucking him. This is this is why women this is why women get in trouble. This is why women have terrible taste of fucking men. She fucks the dude. She gets in trouble for fucking the dude convinces the person that she just got in trouble with to put her in the prime position to fuck the dude again. Fucks the dude again. Tells her that she fucked him. Fucks her. And then fucks him in front of her. After already having gotten in trouble and threatened to get kicked out for fucking him, she fucks him Two to three more times. I think it's three times total. It's two times after she gets in trouble. She got in trouble. She did it two more times after that. Someone had to fucking die. A nigga had to bleed. A motherfucker had to die in that situation. There is no fucking way. Sorry, I'm being really loud. I'm sorry, I'm being really loud. There's no way. There's no way. He was going to live. That nigga had to die. He just dropped a fucking bombshell on her. He's like, my boss wanted to marry me. I'm only with you because I think you're sexy and I wanted to fuck, but you're not giving me any pussy. I'm trying not to cheat on you. And your chick friend who doesn't like me is starting to clap the cheeks for me. And you're not clapping the cheeks. And I need the cheeks to be clapping. <laughs> I get home from work. When Edward gets home from his, his long day of the real estate office, he needs the cheeks to be clapping. That's what Rochelle did. That's what Rochelle provided. He came home from work. He tucked her in. He made her cookies. She woke up and she had the cheeks clapping. It ain't hard to keep a man. It's easy to lose one. It might be hard to get a woman. It is hard as fuck to get rid of a woman when she fucking loves you. As a woman, I had one girl tell me. We broke up. She wanted to break up with me too. Mind you, this is my beginning of the survey. She wanted to break up with me as well. Broke up. She said, no, you're still mine. I really spent another half hour. No, hold, hold on. Let me. I, I spent another half hour. Explaining to her why that was not the case. Took took her back to her, smashed. And then she still found a way to fucking sleep over that night. We still slept in the same bed that evening. We broke up. We smashed. No, I don't think we did. No, I think we did. I think we did. It was crazy, fucking crazy. That's essentially what fucking Monica and Edward went through. 
just retarded bullshit ass relationship crap because no one tells you how to do it correctly and you get so many people like Michael like uh, I don't, I'm not sure if his name is Michael or not honestly it might have been Michael or Anthony one or the other I don't know but like Rochelle's belief that takes advantage or abuse women so you do have women that come out with these battered abused horrific stories but then you also got women like Monica that constantly start shit with their men. They don't give their dude shit that they're fucking desiring or want. They're not attempt they they're attempting to create this is the other failure. This is the issue here. And I'll explain it. I'll say it this and I'm done. This is the other issue here. Is that women spend more time attempting to change you into the man that they want and zero time becoming the woman that you need them to be. That is why most women are single. It isn't because you spend all this time. You're more than likely investing into traits and resources that do not help you in the dating field. And that's great if that's what your skill set is and that's what you're aiming for. But you can't then work around them backwards. And then if you're a Monica, you can't pretend to be a Rochelle. It's going to show. You're not a hoe. You're not fucking into shit. Like, you're not into dick like that. You're not into sex like that. You know, and it's just you can be. Like, you really got to be in balance with both sides of yourself as a woman. You got a hoe side. You know, some dude has seen it. Maybe he's seen it and he abused it, and then you locked her up in the closet because you're like, no dude is ever going to have me do a handstand while I'm doing handstand push-ups and sucking his dick again. And you decided that was disrespectful, and you just, and you're not doing that again for another man. Another guy isn't slapping his dick in your forehead while he's coming down your face and you're giggling because you think it's because you're so proud of yourself for making him. No, you're not impressed by that kind of stuff anymore. But within, I would say on the same note, you know, uh, guys really aren't impressed with a lot of shit that women are into. Just don't give a fuck about it. And that's kind of just the issue with why Monica feels the need to kill Edward and to kill Rochelle <laughs> is that you know in this puritanical super conservative I wouldn't call it Christian conservative because you know the actual religion of Christianity forgives you for what you do but the weird fucking white supremacist fucking puritanical crazy version you know, what they've done cannot subsist within her universe. They just committed adultery, even though they're not married. There's no actual, like, whatever there, or, like, you know, what have you. But they cheated on her. They cheated on her with her best friend. And it's like she's trusting you. And you do that. And it really comes down to, like, if you're tired in your relationship, you should probably just end it. And I know you feel like ending it might be more dangerous than cheating, but imagine the fear that you have of ending your relationship and having the person stalk you or ask you to come back or promise you shit's gonna change or something like that. Imagine that like fifty hundred times worse if they cheat on you. And then you really gotta kill the motherfucker, you know? Monica and Edward could have broken up. Uh I would probably have thought in the story, while writing the story, the way it kinda comes across to me is that Edward very much did want to go with Angela, his boss, and marry her. And that was his goal. That was what he was working for because they obviously had a sexual attraction to each other or a physical attraction if she's proposing to him and taking him on vacation. But he's dating Monica. He's living with Monica as well. 
Um, I didn't really think that whole situation through, honestly, when I was writing the book. But Monica lived with him, or Monica staying at his place, or whatever, paying rent to like be there, or whatever. So he can't really just do what he wants to do with his boss or Angela. Because, well, he does have his own place and he has his own apartment. He has another woman living there who is going to cause hell and havoc in his life if he's fucking his boss inside of his own house. Or fucking any of the women that he's with in his own house. Um, So he had to die. And every woman that he, he had sex with had to die. Or have death threatened upon them. Um, I would say that too is like for the other times, like you can't change a dude. If a dude is telling you like, hey, I am a pussy hungry monster and I need to have a sex five times a day he's gonna find he's gonna do what he's doing. You know? There are some dudes who you think are like the least likely candidates for having a sexual appetite who would fuck your mom and fuck your sister you know and you would never strike them as being sexually attractive you would never strike them as being that type of person and they are they are and Edward is just you have a high value guy or a dude that wants to be high value but then you also have a guy that you want to be moral and have be faithful and it's a breaking point at a certain point where it's like, you can't have me jumping through all these loops of financial success and then have me jumping through all these loops of spiritual success and psychological success and then not reward me physically and not reward me mentally, you know? We don't like the same things. We don't want the same things. We don't have the same ideas about things, you know, between him and Monica. And it's like, you just want me to conform to what you're doing, but you're dating me because of what I am doing. And it's essentially that, like, women change you, then once they successfully change you, they no longer find you desirable. Well, I don't think she changed them. She definitely no longer found them desirable, though. Um, albeit, she was trying to kill Rochelle. She wasn't trying to hurt Edward, necessarily. But she didn't stop at Edward. She definitely made sure that she got back at Rochelle for fucking up her life. Because in Monica's view, in Monica's eyes, there's no... And I think that really breaks it down to, like, this. That's, that's it. Is that you have some woman... Who do not give a fuck. They don't care. As long as I've witnessed it. As long as they have you. When they have you. And they will even share their time with you and other women. And they will not show you that they are bothered. or can. They might be deeply bothered and deeply. And they will not let you know that or whatever. And it's just kind of whatever. You have other women who demand all your time. All your attention. All your focus. All your energy. For no fucking reward whatsoever. And that's just really your fucking toss up as a guy. What you gotta pick from. You're either gonna have a fucking open use bicycle that any point, it's like a fucking uh, one of the scooters that you rent, you know? And any person that wants to put in the deposit, the 200 to $500 for a date to get some ass can put in the $500 and get some ass from your girl. Or you get the girl who doesn't like anybody, kind of likes you, but would only like you if you were this perfect type of guy, and they might give you some ass if you fulfill all these asinine requirements that they have for you. And that's because kind of the archetypes here. And I think the third type and it's this book, An Older Woman as well, you have the Angelas, who are the more mature women who know what they want, know what they kind of got the experience. 
and they kind of they're infused with both women, you know. They are the hoe and they are the fucking goddess. What is it called? The uh, god, goddess Madonna, Madonna complex, something like that. The economy. I don't fucking remember. I'm tired. I'm done. This is my last video for these. I'm done with this for a while. Um, I could have definitely done this in a better format. I just recorded these back to back to back to back to back. Um, I was not expecting this to take as long as it took, but it took a very long time. And I'm tired, so peace out.